Okay, this one is kind of cool. In the last few months, there's actually been quite a lot of different announcements about potential discoveries related to quantum physics, potential quantum computing breakthroughs, and even various experiments that essentially try to use quantum effects to test unusual ideas, such as, for example, if we live in the multiverse. We've briefly discussed one of these experiments in one of the videos in the description. But one of the potentially most groundbreaking papers released in the last few weeks, or technically even in the last year, is really the paper we're discussing today. An unusual proof of concept that, at least in theory, has the potential to redefine how we produce energy on the planet. The concept of a quantum engine. Or, I guess, a quantum motor. Using quantum effects in a very similar way to how we use, for example, fossil fuels, in order to drive a piston to then produce work. And though it might sound kind of far-fetched, this is exactly what the scientists behind this paper were recently able to demonstrate by producing a quantum engine using a fermion boson crossover. A relatively complex concept that does become a little bit easier to understand once we compare this to a typical mechanical engine. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss this new study, let's actually talk about this proof of concept, and obviously talk about why this is kind of exciting. But I guess first, let's start with the symbology of what was actually achieved here and how it compares to a typical engine. Now, in a classical engine, we normally use heat to increase the pressure on the inside and to then generate work. And all of the work is produced by driving the piston. But there are obviously other physical effects we can use to try to generate similar compression and to then generate work in a very different way. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about particles when they reach extremely cold conditions. Now, in our classical world, basically the world we live in, that's relatively warm and relatively hot, pretty much everything around us is what's known as a fermion. A particle that can be either elementary, such as electron, or composite, such as various molecules, that in essence obey a slightly different set of physical laws. Most importantly, they obey what's known as the Pauli exclusion principle. A law of physics proposed by Wolfgang Pauli that basically states that various fermions cannot actually occupy the same quantum mechanical state if they're present in the same location. It obviously might sound kind of complicated, but the easiest way of imagining this is basically anything around you. A lot of atoms around us will usually have to find their own place and cannot actually be in the same location at the same time. Although in this particular case, a much better example comes from astronomy. And specifically, white dwarfs. White dwarfs are a perfect example of Pauli exclusion principle. Here, inside of the white dwarf, is a bunch of electrons. These are all fermions. And they all have to be in a separate location containing slightly different energy and cannot be all in the same place. Which is essentially why white dwarfs assume the smallest configuration possible but still have a certain size. A typical white dwarf is usually around the same size as planet Earth. And so quite a lot of different particles will also be fermions and will also be obeying the same laws. But certain particles can sometimes switch. Or in some cases, they don't even have to switch because by default they will be bosons, not fermions. So for example, photons, particles of light, are the most typical example of bosons. And they don't have to obey the same laws and specifically don't have to obey the Pauli exclusion principle. They can be in the same place at the same time and be in exactly the same energy state as well. And because photons are known to be bosons, that's why you can put a bunch of them in exactly the same place and create something like a laser. The only reason lasers exist is because bosons can basically exist in the same place at the same time and do not obey Pauli exclusion principle. But there are actually some other extreme examples of bosons, even with stuff that we're kind of familiar with. So for example, helium. Helium, like so many other things, has different isotopes. And with helium, things get really complicated really quick. For example, helium-4, one of the isotopes of helium, once it becomes cool enough, automatically becomes a superfluid. And that's because it is a boson. In this case, it starts to acquire a lot of quantum effects, and the liquid helium-4 in this case completely ignores classical physics. What you're actually looking at here is helium liquid creeping up the wall of this cup and coming to the outside, basically ignoring the idea of gravity or even the idea of friction. Likewise, because it's a boson, it can easily assume the same energy state and you can basically condense a bunch of these helium-4 atoms into the tiniest spot possible. You can condense them as much as you want and they're not going to mine anything. They do obey their own laws. Anyway, this might have been kind of complicated, but the only thing you have to get out of this is that there are two types of particles. There are fermions that we're all familiar with, 
the stuff that doesn't like to be in the same place at the same time, and there are bosons, which obey their own laws, and essentially can be seen as these quantum liquids or quantum gases that can easily exist in the same place at the same time. And while, to some extent, because of this unusual difference, maybe there's a way to use this idea to somehow generate similar effects, similar pressure and the motion of piston by basically using these quantum differences. And it turns out that it wasn't actually possible until relatively recently. Now though, scientists have learned to manipulate different atoms in such a way that they can actually easily convert a boson into a fermion and vice versa. And they can actually do so by changing just a few things here and there because certain atoms don't actually mind converting from one to another just depending on the conditions and depending on the situation. Which is exactly what the scientists have recently been able to demonstrate. So for example, just like with the helium-4 atom that can change into a boson in very cold conditions, quite a lot of other atoms do the same. And lithium turns out to be one of the elements that contains an isotope with very intriguing properties, lithium-6. It's quite abundant in nature, but obviously, in normal conditions, acts like a typical fermion. And interestingly, if you cool it down enough, and here we're talking about very close to the absolute zero, it essentially forms an unusual liquid-like state, sometimes referred to as the Fermi C, or Fermi liquid. It's still basically a kind of a classical liquid, but it does contain some intriguing properties. This is what you usually get when you cool down a fermion to the lowest possible level. It's at its lowest energy. But if you start applying certain things to this liquid, things start to transition into something else. Specifically, if you start changing the magnetic field, increasing it just a little bit, the atoms on the inside will transition into something entirely different. They will now start changing into a quantum gas. Or basically they'll transform into what's known as Bose-Einstein condensate, an entirely quantum substance that no longer obeys the laws of fermions and obeys the laws of bosons. Which in essence means that by changing the magnetic field just enough, it becomes possible to transition lithium-6 atoms in between boson and fermion states. Although in this case, they also trap all of this with a laser whose power was changed just a little bit, and so it was basically a combination of magnetic field and the interaction with the laser. But in essence, what this creates is literally a four-step process. A compression step, this is when the piston closes, a fermion step, equivalent to ignition in a typical engine, an expansion step, equivalent to pushing a piston out, and a boson state that resets everything to the original location. But obviously, instead of using heat like in a typical engine, here they basically used quantum effects. By shifting the magnetic field and the laser just a little bit, it transformed the lithium-6 from a fermion to a boson, back to fermion, back to boson. And because bosons and fermions exist in a different state of energy, with fermions obviously creating much more pressure than bosons, to some extent it creates a very similar effect to driving a piston. When the lithium becomes fermionic, it creates more pressure. When lithium changes to bosons, it reduces pressure. In theory, this would be enough to drive the piston. And hypothetically, this is exactly what the scientists were able to achieve in this first experiment. They didn't have an actual piston just yet, but by using the optical and the magnetic trap, they were able to achieve approximately 1 million vibrations per cycle with approximate efficiency of 25%. Although here it's important to note that even more energy was required in order to cool everything down and in order to use the laser. Nevertheless though, the proof of concept was definitely successful. Here the engine was run by using nothing except for energy difference associated with quantum matter at very cold temperatures. And so by changing things from fermions to bosons over and over, it essentially created the necessary pressure differences. But this is obviously still far from being a practical engine. And obviously it's also something that only works in extremely cold conditions in very specific lab environments. And so obviously this is not something we're going to be able to run our cars on, but it's maybe something we can use for a lot of advanced technologies, including one day, maybe, quantum computers. But exactly what this leads to is still too early to tell. This is still just a very, very first proof of concept, and there's really no way to miniaturize this to make this more efficient just yet, and it technically doesn't even have any practical application for anything. I mean, in theory, if we do find the right conditions and the right place to use this, it could definitely generate unlimited energy by just using these very unusual quantum effects. But I guess in some sense, this particular invention is maybe just a little bit ahead of its time. 
Quantum computing is still in its infancy and we don't even know if it ever is going to pick up. And for a lot of other quantum technologies, the actual benefits coming from this are maybe not really that useful. But if one day we finally develop what's known as a quantum battery, this is definitely one way we can easily charge these batteries in order to run the entire system. So yeah, definitely technology of the future, not the technology we're going to be using anytime soon. But still, honestly, really impressive stuff, especially because scientists found a way to literally create a piston using nothing but quantum effects, creating same energy and same work that we usually produce by using things like, for example, fossil fuels, but in this case, using nothing but just the quantum nature of different particles. Mind-blowing stuff, definitely really impressive, but where this goes, we don't really know just yet. Once this is developed a little bit more, or once someone actually makes something out of it, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.